most of us get it. Music has power. The question is, how do we use that power skillfully? Evidence for the positive effects of learning a musical instrument at an early age include the improved size of the brain itself, the improved size of the corpus callosum, the communications channel between the left and right hemispheres, and reduction of symptoms of attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder, as well as improved cognitive, auditory, and visual and motor skills. More recently, neuroscience is making great strides investigating and documenting the effects of sound and rhythm on the human brain, including exploring things like these, how music helps us focus mentally, emotionally, and physically, how music is connected to memorization. Just sing it. Music is a built-in memory palace we can all access and use. How music gives us release of unwanted feelings, sad songs, they say so much, and why music is powerful for physical activity, like pacing in marathons or hand washing to happy birthday. Two times, please. Neuroscience has also given us evidence for how music unlocks mental, emotional, and physical energy. Concentration improves when supported by the right kind of music. Relaxation, mental, emotional, and physical, is more profound with music. And endurance, physical stamina, improves and lasts longer. Ultramarathoners use this. Have you ever tried music during sex? We have more evidence for how music helps with disabilities such as Alzheimer's and dementia. And music therapy has been used since at least World War I for intervention with what we now call post-traumatic stress disorder. And this is exciting news. After 20 years, music therapy has been approved as treatment of autism spectrum disorder. But what can we do for our own self-care to use music skillfully without a therapist? How do we connect reliably to our own built-in intuition and what some are calling the heart brain or the gut brain? Not through our head brain. The head brain is a pretty good pattern recognition and guidance system, but too many times we use our head brain to derail emotional content from our environment. And this practice can detach us from our built-in superpower to actually use music skillfully. Performing musicians get this. Listeners, not so much. One skillful way to put music to work is to release emotions we don't want so that there's space for emotions we do want. Chronic sadness, for example, responds very well to a playlist that contains lots of sad music. Why? Emotions want to move, and we lock them down when we stuff them away or try to use music to drown out the feelings we don't want. Instead of deadening them, it's better to release unwanted emotions safely. And music does that with no unwanted side effects. This means we need to get more offline practice with emotions like sadness and fear and anger so that when we're online and triggered, we have a practice already in place to let those emotions flow and go. So before you grab your happy playlist to change out of your bad mood, honor the mood you're in with music that lets it be. With practice, you'll find that your system welcomes the freedom to feel without judgment. And most importantly, that feeling those feelings you don't want releases them, which leaves you good and ready to play the music that triggers the feelings you do want. Keep in mind that the music you love is the music that's most powerful for you, and that all 8 billion of us can experience music slightly differently. This is why grunge rock or metal can make some people happy while others have a different response. Since you are responsible for the music that works for you, choose wisely. You may find you don't have music for anger or fear, and that's an opportunity to find that music and learn to use it. With practice and the right music, you'll find that even anger and fear will flow and go, leaving you ready to get your happy on.